Hello, welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Vivian Kai Loco. And I am Omaru Sanda Amado. Coming up. Co Ghana's COVID-19 cases shoots up to 1,671 with recoveries moving up to 188 and deaths now at 16. There's been five new reported deaths. We are in the process of validating the, the source and that is why we not uh, mention them somewhere Dead on arrival among the rest. Also coming up, dealers and makers of arts and crafts appeal to government to include them in the stimulus package as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to affect their businesses negatively. Because everything. Also coming up days after the Greater Accra Regional Coordinating Council made it mandatory to wear masks in public, we'll look at the level of compliance. I already have one, but I have to also get some for my... I have dependents, so I have to get some for them. It is very imperative at this crucial moment. Still in the bulletin, Northern Region guest testing laboratory for COVID-19. The machine potentially is able to run 96 samples at a go within a matter of say two hours. So in a day we can set about three times. So if you say less, even a minimum of 90. Let's bring you details of our stories where Ghana's COVID-19 cases has increased to 1,671. Also, the number of recovered persons have moved up to 188. This was disclosed by the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Abwaji, at a press briefing on Tuesday, April 28, 2020. The development means that 221 new cases have been confirmed. The number of people who have died from the virus has also gone up by to 16 and five people have confirmed newly with the case. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Abwaji, disclosed this at a press briefing as City News' Kojajiman reports. The press conference addressed rent and accommodation issues in the wake of COVID-19, Ghana's economic strength to build new 88 hospitals, and Ghana's COVID-19 case management. Minister of Works and Housing Samuel Atachia, who addressed the accommodation and rent issues, appealed to tenants to report landlords who violate the rent laws. He warned landlords who charge rent advance exceeding six months could face a two-year jail term. Rent advance exceeding six months will land you in jail of a maximum term of two years, a fine or boat. How is it going to work in this COVID environment if landlords with commercial appetites start evicting tenants from these premises? That would be very unganian. On Ghana's case management and case count, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Abwaje, disclosed that the number of cases have increased to 1,671. The final count that we have is that we have 1,671 cases. Of this, 563 has come from general surveillance, which is those who fall ill and approach the hospital and they are tested. 105 still remains part of the earlier quarantine, 10 from the quarantine in Tamale, and those we have from the enhanced tracing, that is the group that we actually went out to look for, we found 1,113, bringing our total to 1,671. Currently, about 1,461 are well or no symptoms and are responding very well to treatment. 
we have our six who are moderately to critically ill, um, two at um, UGMC, three in the East and one in Kolebu as we speak today. All the other parts of the country, we do not have any critical case there. For the Congress, we have recorded 188 the announcement of the construction of 88 new district hospitals in areas where there are none has generated debates such as why some abandoned health projects have not been completed and if there is indeed money to execute the project. The health minister, Kweku Ajiman Men, who gave update on uncompleted health facilities, clarified that such projects have not been abandoned. He gave an account of how many have been completed and how many are in the process of completion as well as the new projects. Government, after a similar office on the 7th of January 2017, has never abandoned any health facility that was started by the previous government. And I want to re-emphasize that government has never abandoned any health facility that was started before assumption of office in 2017. We have scheduled and got parliamentary approval. As I speak today, we are negotiating on the value for money report for the contractor, and soon we will mobilize, contractor will mobilize for us to do short cutting to start construction of Koporubia Regional Hospital. Information Minister Kojo Oponkroma, who specifically spoke on the funding and modalities of the over 80 hospitals, said Ghana's economic resilience will see to the completion of these hospitals. Ghana's economy today is resilient enough to afford the COVID-19 interventions, including the 88 hospitals that the President has given the policy directive to be built. We would note that the advance from the IMF is without conditionalities, it enjoys a moratorium and will be paid back from proceeds of economic activity once this crisis is over. Uh, estimated to take about $500 million from uh, the fund. Additionally, the economy is able to afford tax cuts for health workers, allowances for contact tracers, as well as a 50% basic salary top-up for frontline health workers. Post-COVID-19, one key challenge government want to address in Ghana's healthcare system is the issue of infrastructure. For this reason, government has announced the building of 88 district hospitals. Now, the Dalton Thomases were asking if government has the money to carry out this project. All these issues have been cleared and government says the economy is very, very resilient in making sure that these projects will be executed. My name is Kujajman reporting for City News. It's still the City News Show. My name is Vivian Kai. Look, I'm at the Arts Centre and I'm looking at this place because it's a huge place. I mean, this place is a place that you see a lot of tourists come to buy crafts and many other things from here. But because of the COVID-19, there's not much activity happening here. In a bit, I'll take you to some shops. Most of them are shut because nobody comes here at this time. But let me go to the shop and see whether I can speak to the people here because they have opened up their shops despite the challenges. This is uh, an arts and craft shop. And um, let me see if I can get anybody here. Boss, please, please come to, to speak to. Good morning. Good morning, madam. How are you? I'm fine. Okay. Yes, so so you, you work at the art, uh, mm -hmm. the art center? Yes, of you? course. I work at the art center at the craft section specifically. Okay. Yeah. But your business is largely patronized by uh, tourists, right? Yes, madam. And now course. that our borders are shut, does anybody come here? Uh, uh, in actual fact, nobody comes since the onset of the pandemic, even before the lockdown. Nobody's come, but we have been coming because this 
this is where we belong. And we are do, we, we, at the same time, we do production. So while people are not coming to buy, we do upgrade our work and what we lost, and we reshape what we left behind. That is why we have been coming. But for patronizing, nobody is coming. Even the Ghanaians who comes to buy, like the cloth and our symbols, nobody comes because of what is happening in the world. And how are you managing that, knowing that you rely heavily? This is your main job, isn't it? Yes, madam. So this. how are you managing with this? Okay, you see, um, I don't have anything to do. This is where I belong. This is my work. So I don't think I have to stay home while I have some work to do. Though I'm in a big challenges because of patronizing and sales, that is not forthcoming. But I have certain things that I have to do because I do production, I do many things. Because my mind is, because the government has given a stimulus for 600 million cities to the NBSSI. Oh, yeah. And we are also members of SB, NBSSI. So what I'm thinking is, while I'm doing my production, so all what I have, the money that I have, I'm putting it in the work. So I'm doing it and paying my transportation and feeding my family. Being that I know this stimulus, we are going to have a little bit, a chunk of the money so that when everything goes down, then we continue and upgrade and stock our, 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 ourselves. So in view of our numbers, we ask for one million Ghana cities. Okay, I think around. it's not so much anyway, but uh, we also have to look what the government the effort is doing. So we just decide to write a very small amount. So we wish you well. We hope government, um, you know, gives you that one million you're looking for to shield your business from collapsing during this challenging time. So thank you so very much. But we'll, we'll let you take us through some of your production and see exactly what you do okay. uh, now that you're here. But let me give uh, my viewers an idea of what is happening here in the shop, for example. So he was saying that the arts and crafts, for example, they do some Ghanaian symbols. So if you see this table, for example, you can see the Jinyami and um, some other Indian Christ symbols. Then if you look um, at this side, they They've also come up with very, very lovely art crafts. These ones are pretty cool. And then you can see these wall hangings, the Jinyami ones and all that. And a lot of beautiful things they've done. Some with the brass. This is brass, I believe, right? Yeah, these are brass. This is brass. brass uh, yeah, brass works. Very beautiful, cute little um, art crafts and the cycles, the motor bicycles and all that. But uh, my name is Vivian Kailoko. I'm at the art center. I'm here because today we're looking at the impact of the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic and we're here because 90% or 95% of the people who patronize our arts and crafts are tourists and we have the borders shut down so what it means this place is not being patronized the 5% that will patronize this place as you and I are not coming out to do this because the last thing on our minds is to buy arts and crafts or whatever it is to decorate our homes our gardens or whatever but how are they going by we're finding out from them as we speak with them so come with me and let's go to another place I've come to the textile area to look at how things are going here. But I see a gentleman. This is what you usually see when you come to the art center. Apart from the various stores you see, you see quite a number of people showing you their wear for you, trying to get your attention for you to buy. Boss, what's your name? Uh, my name is uh, The Seven Three. Okay. Do you do these t-shirts yourself? Yes, I, I do. I do by myself. So you buy it and then you put it on or you do everything? Um, I buy the t-shirt and I give, um, I give it to a tailor. To work on it and now that we have this pandemic is this still good business nah. for the past um almost two months now i've not even so why bother and come why don't stay at home nobody's coming here anyway why do you still come you still have hope somebody will pass by yeah that's the issue i still have hope so last Maybe week nobody came nobody came this last last week and today today's too you, you're not sure Okay, let's see. Maybe at the end of the day, maybe at times um, the domestic people too used to come to buy. So, if, which people? The Ghanaians. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I I wish you well with that. But let me go this way and see what is happening here. And this will give you an idea of 
um, those that are closed that I'm, I was trying to tell you so if my right side all these shops are closed every shop on this lane is closed on a normal day all this place the shops will be opened there'll be business bustling here but all the way to the end every shop is closed now if you listen to those who I've spoken to so far um, it's just about five percent of you and I that patronize things over here and um, that is showing during this period um, in this challenging time but I've come to another place I'm still at the textile area this place majority of the things i see are fugu beautiful northern uh material called the fugu or the northern cloth um, being displayed here and i'm going to speak to the gentleman here he is brave enough to have come to work today and opened the shop knowing very well that majority of his customers may not come but he's breaking the odds and, and it has come uh, okay boss what's your name Fatcho Charles Okay. Charles. 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 And as I say, you know, the shatter be be about the sinner down and he will be a mahabim. Mm. Two, yeah, my mom can't say your way. If you'll be crying here, be said, Fugu or the car, sorry, and our engagement and our wedding cry. Yang yet, son of Marina, and your wedding, she say, in your engagement, young car, sorry, young quiet ye. It's a old ton be beer to say, yeah, I say, own ton of ye, but said the wind yet, Juma. And he bears a one manta. On my panier day, locked down the bar any day. Yet, dear, ye near Juma. Timmy one city, ya. Now five cities, I'm not coming quite at the next year down, say, Betty and Tina made the baba. Because Eddie. Now, oh, 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 um, a year in my seven. Oh, you need to own my mammy, Mary, and I'm in color five. Yes, seven. I won't cry. This is a Siano or final question. Sir, government, more person, more bomb, more damn potent, and more person, more year bomb. Yes, so my opinion is say, at least because your capital you cry, dear. Yet, Asa, and to your Bob Mice, Kaka Kaka Krabby. Now, yet, dear, say, you mumu, now, yes, that's it, Kaka Kakra, Nemum, say, be about your boy, I'm saying, Bosumi, be a interesting cranny, a tree, a baby, because six hundred million, I'm a taste of their children. The coin and requirements now won't hono. May yes, for saying your walk shop was in, even ten percent crabby. I'm still at the art center. I've come to the southern production side where there's also quite a number of drums being manufactured here and a few arts and a bit of craft also going on over there. So um, still the drums happening here. Another gentleman, he's not into drum making, but he's into batik making and all that. And let's see uh, what he does here and how challenging it's been. Boss, so uh, what do you do here? I can see some Yes, dye um, dye as you on. see now, we're doing direct dye. Mm -hmm. um, you see, these guys, the gentlemen here, they like this kind of um, fancy, fancy apparels, you know, so when they bring their jeans, okay. and then, you know, we make it colorful for them. So you can get, do that for my jeans? Exactly, you can do that. Okay. And, you know, um, actually, we do it as a part-time to what we do, because currently, there's no job doing. Uh -huh. So we rely on this for, you know, hand to mouth. Yeah, let me see that kind of a thing. So your main job is uh, something else apart from this? Yes, we do uniforms, we do printing, we do we do batiks. So is know. there any production going on um, inside? Apparently not today, but um, um, let me give you a sample of what we do. Okay, so he's going to get us a sample, but he's mainly into this, the tie dye, the batiks, and then they do um, other things in terms of production. So this is one of those. This is beautiful. Is panel, um kitchen napkins so let me say table napkins yeah. for you know somebody yesterday right so, so permit me to uh, my yes, left you can do that you can so, do that so this is yes. what you do oh this is lovely you see our business depends solely on um, let me say those who come in to buy presents you know wedding gifts you know souvenirs and uh, you know let me say people who are really interested or who know what they want you see so um with the lockdown you know nobody's coming to town there are no engagements anymore. You know, all those things have been suspended. So um, our, our, our foreign clients too are not coming because this season happens to be 
the time when I mean they do come in, you know, at random, there are no more coming, so we are stuck down. I'm still at the art center. I've come here today to see how persons who work here involved in arts and crafts, uh, textiles, all these crafts are doing uh, following the pandemic. Uh, I'm going to the um, northern production site. Uh, they usually do the drums and these things. They usually uh, export them. I'm come to speak to them on how they are managing it. On my left side, you can see some gentlemen beautifully doing the drums and these i'm told are going to be for exports but let me speak to the person who is behind these drums um, he's alaji alaji has been doing this for years and he'll tell us more about the alaji hello you're welcome thank you uh, welcome to city newsroom as well thank you i know you've been doing this for long but how many years nearly 20 years 20 years yeah. how has business been for 20 years <laughs> It's normally up and down, but of late it is very down. And why do you think it's so down? Because of this invisible enemy, coronavirus. Mm. Usually our customers are the Europeans. And as we all know, there are travel bans all over the world. So traveling from Europe, America and Australia down to Africa, it's, there's been a hold. And so certainly there is no market for us. Let's go to your shop and have an idea of what exactly you, you do here. So I can see you have a more, so you are mainly into drums. About 80% of what we produce here is for exports. Okay. Yeah, we sell locally about 20% thereabout. Mm. Yeah, for the local market. And in fact, it's one of our, our problems. The local market is very, very, low people do not patronize uh, our products locally and it is because they are too expensive isn't it? it is not the case so how much let's say this size this uh, one. yeah yeah this one you can get for 100 cds this one yes oh, I like it. yeah it's expensive. yeah no 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 it, it's not expensive at all considering the fact that you know the cost of production there are many inputs into this one okay. and the wood is the principal input so this is the principal yeah this is the principal input and this is Trinibua wood okay yeah yeah so we'll go and look at the hide i can see some around here. yeah these are hides which we have to treat in fact and you see because of the lockdown for the three weeks a lot of them have gone bad Oh yes. Why that? So why? No, uh, I think oh, you you, you rather are, are having you are having so, a distance. So Insects have penetrated and then have destroyed them. We when we came after the lockdown, we had to sort these things out. A lot of them have gone bad, and we had to discard them. So this uh, pandemic is obviously causing a lot of um, uh, harm for you guys in terms of your revenue and all that. What do you think government can do to salvage your business? As at now, we are less employed. So our cry is government should take a cue from what is happening in other countries. Of course, they are rich, richer than us so that government can uh, uh, give us some stimulus you know to help us i hear there's some 600 million ghana cities ready for us but it is too small it's still the city news show my name is vivian kai look i'm still at the art center so do you know how to play the drum yeah can you Nothing teach me something you don't have the tune one i think my brother so have... this one is not true no this one is not tuned. because the sound is different so if it's not true, it's like big. Yeah, the sound is different. So what I was playing, it wasn't tuned. This is not tuned. No, this one is not tuned. Hey. <laughs> okay, so let's see one that is tuned. So this is a city 
Nation. Thank you so much for watching us from the art center. My name is Vivian Kai Logo. Keep watching City News Room. We'll be right back. My way insurance, you know. Wait, a your mobile phone see insurance. Obi at me, yebi. It's a sane bono. At the form, you hear so bad dialing. Star one six five hash. Three city sister persons. A couple of fifteen city sister persons. What's the media? When your insurance cover? You know, when you know, meet me, Yamano. For your man, who are who are quite so human for Baco Kao. Where do you say I simple? So, who become my way with you? You are laughing, money in a BBC. I'm one claim insurance. Yes, I'm so sick. I'm a five percent back. Star one says five hash. What's me the year saving so? My way insurance. I'm a bum of ya. I know my way. I said, No way. No way, way, a product of my life and MTN Momo. Extra minutes and extra unlimited calls. Yeah. Not just that. Yeah. Even our extra data doesn't expire. You fill up. Simply dial star one 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 hash to bundle now. Airtel to go. Life is simple. mask as you watch me on TV now. If you're not, at least you're seeing me in a nose mask. Perhaps you've been wondering where we get these masks from. The PPEs as they're called, personal protective equipment. Now these, prior to the COVID-19, were not in high demand. Of course, you see a doctor wearing this, a surgical mask. But now, almost everybody, and indeed it's become compulsory for Ghanaians to wear face masks in operating. How are these masks produced? Where are they produced from? What's the quality of the production? And what's the process of production? That's the story we have for you on the City Newsroom today. And I'm going to go through a guided tour led by an official of this company known as Dignity. So we're here to see how you do your work. So if you could kindly show us, we'd be grateful. Right. That we would have to go to the cutting area. Okay. okay. Where you're going to see how we produce and, and what you call it. Lay those materials and how we come out with a particular nose mask. Okay. So we do the laying. When it is completed, then we do the cutting over there. That is what the gentleman is cutting over there. Laying and cutting of what? Of the PPE. Okay. Yeah. So that the, that is this particular PPE is the nose mask. Okay. So this one is a three-layer nose mask. So that is what we are cutting. We have the body and then we have the the ropes that holds it. So these are the ropes. Yes, please. Okay, so they cut the roots here and then what happens next? Then we send it to the production line for stitching. What kind of material is this? This one is 100% cotton and it's coming from uh, Akutumbo Textiles. So it's a local product we are using for the PPE. Is that what they call the calico? Um, basically, yeah, it yeah, looks this like is that. white cloth. Yes, it's so a this white is the calico. This is what the Food and Drugs Authority said should be used the leaning under your. Yes. Okay. So each of the masks you produce here would have this. Yes, in all the masks is 100% this. So, Rana, they're just doing the, the ropes that hold the mask. Yes. So, they're doing this part. Yes. Okay. That's what they are actually doing now. That's over what they're cutting here. Yes, please. Now, now they are leaving to get the main body. That's what they are doing over here. 
but it's not completed yet, so you wouldn't see the main body. Okay. But we have a completed main body which has been cut in blocks, as you can see over there. Okay, we can look at that. Yes. Mm. Still in block form. Okay. We've not divided into sections yet. But we have some small portions over there that are already into a section. So this becomes what? It becomes the PPE, but it's not in final stage yet. So that is, that is the nose max. Okay. Yes, okay. for the three plies. All right. So we can go to the next stage in your production process. Well, then we move to the other side. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Are we clear? <laughs> Are we clear to go? Yeah. So, Mr. La, um, yes, where is this? Where are we this place is building C. It's purposely allocated for only the PPEs okay. production. So, this is where you produce all your. Oh, yes, please. All right, we can go in there. Uh, so many people are busy. In fact, I can see all manner of sewing machines. I'm not sure if that's the appropriate term to use in describing them. But people are generally busy. Mr. La is still with me. Mr. La, so, um, lots of activity here. Tell me. So this is the process of producing the face mask. Yes. Which stage are we at now? At basically here, the stage is the three ply production, and the three ply production begins with the folding. The lady here does the folding. She takes it and then does the folding. We we'll pass it to the next person. She will close it, and the lady sitting over there will do the turning. Okay. So you three ladies in the line. Yes. Uh, it starts from here. It starts from here. The, that she does the turning. Over okay. there. And this is for the, for the frontage of the mask? Yes, please. No, this one is the frontage of the mask. Then the, she will turn it to bring the outer lid. Okay. And this place is overlocking. Overlocking means that we are closing the mask of one side. So she does the closing of the mask of one side. This, so that. But then when we finish, we have to do packaging. I've noticed something. You're dealing with a very sensitive material like face mask, uh, protective equipment. And yet, a lot of your workers, or not all your workers that I'm seeing, are not wearing hand gloves. What's the explanation behind that? Yeah, the explanation is that they just returned from a session. They went for a lunch and they returned. But what we do is that we encourage hand washing and we also have sanitizers that we have provided at every location. So they do sanitize their hands every 30 minutes intervals. So do they wear their gloves at all? Yes, they do wear their gloves in the morning when they come. Now, after you package them into the boxes and they take them away, we have not seen you do any sterilization here. Do you know if there will be further checks to ensure people are not affected? Yes, I know that the uh, Ministry of Health does sterilization before consumption will be done. And that I am assured. The Ministry of Health does for uh, sterilization. I want to try it on and see how it works. Okay. Now, okay, so I am going to wear this on top of my mask. Oh my God. And then, yes, yes. The you, you pull it, when you pull it, it will open. Yes. Like okay. That. Why do you have to pull? Because it has to cover your beard. Oh, okay. You okay. understand? So I to prevent any foreign materials from going in. Then, then I tie it, it on the it and So I'm going to dispose this off, and uh, it's just a mask, and um, a locally made one that I've just tried on. And how many quantities do you produce every day? Uh, daily we give... 50,000. You produce 50,000 quantities a day. Yes. This is a day. Yes. Oh, I mean, is that the government supply or in total, including everything else you've been producing on the Only side? government supplies. Only what? government supplies we do. Every day? Yes. And where do you send them to? Uh, we have the military team and the Ministry of Health team coming around to collect it. They normally come at 3 o'clock. So they come at 3 p.m. to come and collect these? and then take it to wherever they have to take it yes. to. So those are vehicles uh, from the Ghana Health Service, Ministry of Health. Uh, they arrive here every afternoon, and they are actually being driven by the uh, military personnel. They come to pick the daily supplies or production of protective equipment, specifically the uh, nose masks that are produced here in the tens of thousands. Well, so the vans have loaded up the PPEs for the day and they are having to move out of this factory. The gentleman who came with them, even though they were being driven by military personnel, uh, is here. Let's just quickly pick his thoughts. Hello, what's your name there? Hello, my name is Michael from Pong. Michael, you are from where? Um, I'm from Ministry of Health. I'm a volunteer worker for Ministry of Health um, under COVID-19 projects. I see. So you do this every day? Yeah, we do this every day. We go every day to collect um, the PPEs the factories have made so far for the day. So we collect them every day, including Saturday. 
Which factories do you go to? Or which, where are the factories? Um, one of the factories is in Audomia State. We have one around the Farm Oak Limited, and then we have one in Ashalibotre, and then we have two companies here. So in total, you do five? So yeah, so in total, we do five companies each day. And what type of PPEs do you pick from these factories? Um, we, 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 we pick hospital scrubs, we pick surgical gowns and hats, and then we also pick nose masks. Michael is uh, leading the team of military personnel who have been moving from factory to factory, uh, collecting um, PPEs that have been produced for the Ministry of Health on behalf of the government. And 50,000 PPEs or nose masks produced at least from this factory. And we are told this has been happening for the past 10 days or so. Well, we have seen the production of PPEs. We have seen the collection by the government. We also know that there are people who are selling. And we know there's a directive for people to wear face masks when they go to public spaces. This is a CMB market in Accra, and we have come here to check the level of compliance and also how people really buy masks. So generally, people seem to be adhering to the directive on masks. Uh, people are hawking masks here, um, funny enough, and these include the African print ones and the already packaged ones. We do not know the origin of these ones. The funny thing too is that people dip their hands into a basket of, of PPEs and uh, select what they think is appropriate for them. And that's so much for preventing contamination. And while this is happening, others have thrown caution to the wind and are not interested in wearing any masks at all. Why you came to buy your mask here? You work around? Oh, no, I have one. I already have one, but I have to also get some for my. I have dependents, so I have to get some for them. It is very imperative at this crucial moment. You get some for your dependents, not only you, uh, so that you get the family all going as well. Yeah, that's why I decided to get one for my baby. How assured are you of the quality of what you just bought? Whoa. You see, uh, just that they are selling by the roadside. Sometimes uh, you empathize or that. Uh, there's a notion that most of them don't sell uh, quality goods, but at times they sell quality goods. Well, so there's some business happening here. So this um, lady just uh, bought a mask and she's trying it on. One of the masks that are sold by the roadside by hawkers. So we are looking at compliance here, all these uh, market women uh, selling fish, vegetables, are wearing their face masks. And um, it seems a very orderly team here on my left and the right as I walk through the aisle, they are wearing their masks. You are not wearing the face mask, why? Nothing. Can you look at me? Where is your face mask? I did not bring mine. Why didn't you bring yours? Nothing. You have one? Yeah. But where is it? I did not bring it. It's at home. But you know that it's compulsory for you to wear it all the time, especially when you are coming to sell? Yeah. So why are you not carrying one? Forget it. Do you know you can be arrested for not wearing a mask? No. Do you understand why you are supposed to wear a mask? Yes. So why are you not wearing it? Or you don't believe in the story? Uh, I don't believe. Hello, sir. Hello. What's your name? Ibrahim Mohamed. Your full name? Ibrahim Mohamed. You are wearing your mask? Yeah, I'm wearing because of cholera virus. Since when did you start wearing it? I start wearing it one president, our president said you should wear it, the Motkoba. What do you know about coronavirus? Now, I don't know anything about cholera virus, so, because I just hear it, people is talking about cholera virus. I do not see somebody that cholera virus hold. And me, me myself, I'm okay. I'm all right now. 
But some people say the cholera virus is in uh, Ghana. You should wear the mask cover and the <coughs> sanitizer. You used to use the sanitizer. And All right. Um, let me move forward. And still, this is a CMB area where there's uh, this business happening. I don't think I'm mask on show. Mask in the yes, sir. Yes, sir. Obia, sir. Wah. Yes, you call it in new way. We are not so fast in this guy, but oh. And then I have turned to my dear, and I have come to your knees to hear that. Okay. And you wait a little longer. We are meeting on three cities. How are you, man? How are you? How are you, man? Hi. Okay. You've just heard her. The reason she's wearing the African print one, and there are specifications for no mask. She has given her reason for wearing the one she's wearing. She says, ideally, she would have worn the one I'm wearing, but it costs five cities and she cannot pay that much. So she goes for the cheaper one. But let's hear from the Food and Drugs Authority as to which ones are the proper face mask to wear in the fight against COVID-19. So if you go out and you want a home baby nose mask, that is recommended by FDA. One, it should not be one that has a single layer it should not be one that has two layers. It should not be one that has the printed materials on it. However, we, rec we recognize that some people still want to, uh, for some decorations or for their corporate identity, they still want to use printed materials. What we recommend is that out of these three layers, the outermost one, the one that doesn't touch the skin, can for the purposes, for these purposes, be the printed one. So what it means is that you have the calico, for example, calico, calico, and then you have the printed materials. Or you have calico, skin, and then you have the printed material outside. So those are the recommendations that we will see for the combinations that we have recommended. Let's take you to the Nima market because it has been opened after it was closed because traders there were flouting the social distancing rule. My colleague Hawa Idrisu has more. The Nima market was closed on Friday by the Ayawasu East Municipal Assembly after traders failed to comply with social distancing directive. Authorities at the assembly decided to reopen the market after some deliberations with the various market leaders yesterday, where the traders agreed to operate a shift system to avoid overcrowding in the market. The traders were then given cuts for them to know exactly how they are going to operate. At the time of City News's visit to the place this morning, it was observed that market women who were plying their trade on the street just outside the market were not observing the social distancing protocol. However, for the traders in the market, they were seen to be practicing the social distancing. Some traders who spoke to City News say they want the assembly to evacuate the traders selling on the street to save their market from being shut again. Um, I'm here to see any police or military officer on the street controlling the people. In the morning, it was the women themselves who went to the street to uh, drove out uh, the fishmongers from Jamestown and the environs. So I'm still appealing to the authorities to at least bring in some enforcement to take care of this issue. We don't have problem with the social distancing because from where I'm selling my goods and where this table is, there is a social distance between them. I put my my box on the floor, then I select my tomatoes. This woman will be selling a thing. So from year to year, there is a social distance. We don't know what they are trying to tell us. If they say it's the market, then the market we are. If you if if you can go around the market and see, there is social distance because from year to year where the woman is selling things, it's a social distance. So we don't know what they are trying to tell us. I feel excited because I'm staying at home, doing nothing, very bored. So at least, and then let's see. Um, there is no money. So at least I'm, 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 I'm here to, you know, make money. Let's say if a customer comes, you see, they, um, they said I'm two meters away. So 
<laughs> I am educated, so I know two meters. So yeah. So when, for instance, um, if the person is here, I'm somehow inside the let's so just to you know, yeah. So that's how I observe mine. Nima Divisional Police Commander ACP Ibrahim Akwe tells City News the police will use robust force to deal with the recalcitrant traders who are defying the directive on social distancing. But now that it has come to our knowledge that no, they cannot abide with that external discipline, it means that we have to uh, install the external discipline by deploying more security officers, the joint uh, effort of the police and then the military, so that at least uh, we will maintain uh, sanity. So, so that means you are going to employ more force? Certainly. When persuasive force, force must be applied, yes, not necessary, necessary force, we are going to graduate our force. Yes, so you'll be a little robust at the tactical level. Yes, but uh, if you go and then they comply, then there won't be the need for us to apply any force. But if when you go and then the people are recalcitrant, then you need to apply the minimum force in order to achieve our uh, desired uh, objectives. You're still watching City News Ramon, City TV. Still ahead, samples of COVID-19 taken in the northern region will not need to be brought to Accra anymore. I'll tell you why. get all the understanding on some of the difficult subjects you struggle with in school. As a student, do you feel dissatisfied with how hard it is to figure out a subject you're learning? Or as a parent or guardian, do you worry that your child is struggling to understand some of the subjects in school? Well, now you don't need to sign up for extra lessons or tutors. Simply tune in to Class Act, Mondays to Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. on City TV. Class Act is a show that seeks to enable senior high school students gain a much better understanding of what they learn in school. All you need is a TV, a chair, your notebook, and your pen. Get clarity on subjects such as math, English, IT, and science. Class Act is every Monday to Thursday at 5.30 p.m. on City TV on DSTV Channel 363 and Go TV Channel 182. Don't forget your pens, pencils, and your notebooks and tune in to Class Act only on City TV. City TV is live. On DSTV, go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV. It's your world. Welcome back. Now, samples collected for COVID-19 tests in the northern region will no longer be transported to Kumasi and Accra for testing. This is because the Tamale Reference Laboratory is set to begin testing of COVID-19 samples by Wednesday, April 28. Officials say almost all the equipment necessary for the testing are ready, as correspondent Dan Angwan reports. The Tamale Public Health Laboratory serves as a reference laboratory for the meningitis belt in Ghana and West Africa. It has, for over the past 25 years, gone through various stages of certification and currently conducts screening and analysis of other diseases, including HIV. However, with the surge in Ghana's COVID-19 cases and the need for rapid tests, 
President Ekufuado, during his seventh national address on measures taken against its spread, announced the expansion of PCR technology in some laboratories to enhance COVID-19 testing in the country. Following this announcement, the Northern Regional Health Directorate and the Tamale Public Health and Reference Laboratory say testing for COVID-19 cases will begin on Wednesday. The head of this laboratory, Dr. Abbas Abdul Karim, says they have the capacity to test over 200 cases a day. The machine potentially is able to run 96 samples at a go within a matter of, say, two hours. So in a day, we can set about three times. So if you say less, even a minimum of 90, so you realize that 90 multiplied by three in a day is what we can do. So and I think the hopefully we should be able to uh, get, get the results in real time. He said the challenge, however, is the absence of biosafety level three needed to safely handle the samples. The BSL-3 is actually um, a facility that is needed for us because looking at the contagious nature of the COVID or the coronavirus, the COVID-19, we actually need that facility to be able to safely handle the samples. Uh, but the fact that we don't have it means that we have to rely on the BS2, the BSC2, that's the Biosafety Cabinet Class 2. As part of preparations, laboratory scientists from the Navrango Research Center, UDS, Tamale Teaching Hospital, Bon Tamale Veterinary Laboratory and the Tamale Public Health Reference Lab were taken through some of the guidelines for COVID-19 testing. The head of the Accra Veterinary Laboratory, Dr. Theophilus Odum, advised participants to be mindful of the biosafety precautions. The Dean of the School of Allied Health Sciences at UDS, Professor Nafiu Amidu, appealed to the public to support the lab with personal protective equipment. Once we start the testing, the major issues that normally come is the consumables and then the PPE. And currently we do not have enough. So we are appealing to every individual, either individual or the group that have the capacity to, to support and donate the PPE and the consumable to us to help so that together we can continue running the service 24-7. From Tamale Public Health Reference Lab, I am Zaina Nguan for City News. Let's bring you some other stories. And waste management company Zoom Lion is recommending that the government conducts disinfection exercises at key installations and security facilities periodically. Zoom Lion, which has collaborated with City TV to disinfect 27 tertiary institutions on Tuesday, disinfected the Kotoka International Airport to reduce the risk of COVID-19 infection spreading amongst passengers and airport staff when the company resumes operations. Our colleague Kojo Ajiman has more. All departments of the Kotoka International Airport were disinfected. Arrival halls at both Terminal 2 and 3 were thoroughly disinfected. Key installations at all the terminals were also not left out. The aviation minister, Kofi Ada, who observed the exercise, hinted that domestic flights are likely to resume this weekend. We're particularly doing this because we want to start the domestic flights first. And let me also bring to your attention that in all of Africa, we are the only country that closed down the airports and are about to begin. So we want to do it well and do it right to make sure that we lead the way and, and, and put out the right example uh, for other African countries to follow. There are other countries that are ongoing in terms of the operations, but they are different. For, for us to have closed down the airports, uh, most African countries, and to start again, is only Ghana that's prepared to start. We're hoping that after today and tomorrow, they'll be mopping up by the airport company and Port Health, and then soon, soon thereafter, we'll see what else needs to be done. Perhaps getting towards the weekend, we'll now begin the domestic uh, flights. Waste management company Zoom Lion, which has collaborated with City TV and the Ministry of Local Government to carry out a number of these exercises, is recommending that the government periodically disinfect key facilities in the country, like the airport and other crowded areas such as markets. And going forward, we would like to recommend that the uh, disinfection does not last forever because there are areas that they need to be done on weekly basis. There are areas that we need to be done on daily basis. Therefore, we're recommending 
that the Ghana Airport or the Ministry of Aviation will be able to have a plan, a tentative plan, so that there are areas where people crowd a lot, like the arrival and then the departure, will be able to have a, a daily and weekly plan so that the place will be disinfected on the daily basis. From the arrival hall to the departure hall, our next stop is on the aprons, the taxiways and the runways of the Kotoka International Airport. The next stop was the Ghana Air Force Base. Hangars and fire terminals here were all disinfected. My name is Kojo Ajman reporting for City News. Well, that's it for today's edition of the City Newsroom. You can go to our website, citynewsroom.com. We have more stories over there, including this one. Subscribe to City TV on YouTube for more exclusive video contents from City TV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store and keep updated on the go. You can also watch City TV on DSTV Channel 363 and Go TV Channel 182. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And my name is Omaru Sandamado. Thank you for watching.